right, so we're doing a VOD review of my viewer, Mr. Giloy. Uh, he is a gold player. Uh, he is playing Nico versus Tristana with an Ash. So in general, Blitzcrank can uh, hook either them to get kills. So he's going Guardian, which is something I've taught. The reason he's going Guardian is because if Blitzcrank lands a hook on him or the Ash, um, it can be the difference between living or dying. So I'm going to put the vision, I guess, to our side only. And let's show the objective timers. Okay, good. So let's see the full runes he went. Uh, font of Life is fine. I usually have been liking going to Mollus recently, but it's okay. Uh, bone Plating's okay. You might be getting procced by this guy's ease and stuff, so be careful, but it's okay. Um, Overgrowth is fine, too. Taste of Blood. Um, you're not really into a poke lane. Taste of Blood probably doesn't really help you that much. Um, you're probably better off just getting Zombie Ward for the late game vision control, but it's still fine. And in Units Hunter's okay. I guess you like to go... Um, you like to go active items like Shirelias and stuff, but Ingenious Hunter is also fine. I probably would go Relentless because of the early game roaming. Anyways, let's fast forward a bit. Um, get to the lane starting. So on Nico, I start W level 1 and teach my followers too. You can use this to auto attack harass the Tristana and Blitz. And you can also use it to shove waves to hit level 2 first. And you can use it to find a stealth into root level 2 for a pick. So level 1, Gulag should be hitting the casters to get his W proc'd. So one, two, and then now you should be looking for an auto attack on someone. Your positioning is really good compared to last time I watched you. You're staying right behind the minions really close. Backing up a bit here is fine because there's not that many minions left. Also level one, um, just stealth right away. It, yeah, that's what I say. Make, you should have auto attacked the Tristana there when you got when you got pulled. You should have auto attacked the Tristana right away. But it was a good example there of you can play super aggressive with Nico into uh, Blitzcrank level one because when he hooks you you just can insta stealth because he doesn't have his knock up once he has his E you have to play really scared but as long as your W's up level one you can play super aggressive and it, the most you take he hooks you can get autoed once from Tristana that's it so he's using his procs to hit level two uh, he doesn't have his W up so he's not able to find like a level two stealth in but that was good enough you should have watched out Blitz could have probably hooked you in there but so get your W up and look for her ass um, standing behind the minions your position's got a lot better you're standing right behind the minions which is good you're getting a ward down early. This is fine ward. Good. The reason it's good is because usually you want to place it... Usually you want to place this ward just a bit lower, like right there. Because of the fact that if you put it right there, it'll give you vision up to here. Where you have it here, you're getting vision there. So you want the ward like right here. So that you still get vision up to here. So if they're jungler ganks, that extra time to know can be the difference between noticing, like living or dying. Um, also your jungler's right here. So you know the crab spawning in another 30 seconds. You know that Set's going to be playing to fight for the crab. So you actually could have warded this bush because you're going to have vision. If your jungler's bot side taking the crab, you ward this bush because the crab will give you vision here so you're ungankable. This ward doesn't really do much when the crab's here. So that's the one thing I would say different there. All right, so you're attacking the caster. Um, if this guy walks forward, you go for an E-flash. Just E-flash. Actually, E flash probably would have been bad because Tristana has W and she can W it. That was, dude, you could have died there. She could have just hooked you under tire. So you want to shove this wave in and then move to help set take this crab just in case the enemy jungler comes. Nice, he missed it. So now he's missed it, you can play really aggressive. You don't have to hide behind minions anymore. Yeah, so you're walking in front of minions. Good job. You're still playing too passive. Like, you can just literally stand. Like, right now, you can walk up auto. He has no hookup for another four seconds, six seconds, right? So. Playing around people's cooldowns is really big, but so far, so good. Thank you for the follow, uh, May Metulu. So, I do this too. You never want to be just sitting here. This is something I can improve on too. You're sitting here waiting for a wave to come. You could have actually walked, like, up to here and back and done been in the same place the reason why it's important is because you can walk to here and then potentially you can finish off your row mid or you can just walk back to lane i need to get better at this too uh hello friend so whenever there's nothing to do like this you can literally just walk to here and walk back it also the enemy then might think you're placing a new ward and it's time award for three minutes from here here but yeah just standing there doing nothing doesn't really put any pressure and i'm saying this is something i'm noticing right now about myself too like i would do the same thing to be honest so you might as well just walk halfway to somewhere and come back Alrighty. So again, Blitzcrank has hooks, so you're doing good staying behind the minions. Blitzcrank, Tristana lane is really scary. You really can't play aggressive at all. You've already in this lane been throwing out a lot of roots, to be honest. And the reason that's bad is because if you miss, Tristana can just straight W onto you, and then Blitz can just like flash E you or something, and you're just dead. I usually just try to only Q poke like you're doing right there, and just chill. So 
So you're playing a bit more passive than you were earlier. You can be like right up here. You don't have to keep walking backwards. Watching out for that gap though. Good. It's kind of a boring lane. I don't know what to tell you. You're playing it really well. This lane is kind of, you can't really do much. Um, one thing I would say right now is you can see your mid laner is getting shoved under tower and low. Um, you probably want to look, if you can, hard shove the next wave and roam mid if you can. Um, it might be a good, like, if you can shove the wave here, it's really big for you. Um, you actually can't. They're pushing towards you. Ash was too safe. Yeah, I mean, Ash has to play safe. You can't play aggressive into Blitz Tristana. Their win con is to scale. Your win con is to hit level 6 and not die. You were traded? Yeah, I, I, I agree. You can't really be for too long. But it looks like Set is running mid. I agree, you can't leave her too much. Even right now, though, you see that the enemy bot lane left. You could have right now, as soon as you notice that they're gone, you could have just took a path here and just walked straight mid. Because this guy just got ganked and Set went up top. So now he's hovering bot side because he knows the jungler's top. So he's hovering the side where he knows he can't get ganked from. So now would actually be a perfect time to just ditch your ADC and roam. You can't also push the wave, but... I'm just saying, your ADC is pretty safe. So if she gets killed, it's her own fault, TBH. Because this is probably a free kill if you do get there. And your teammate's actually about to int. But yeah, you can't really leave this lane, so I respect you staying. It's fine. I just hooks down, play aggressive. Like, literally stand in front of the wave. You don't need to stand behind the wave anymore. Walk up into the bush. Take control of both bushes. Walk forward. You can literally face check this bush. Just walk into it. It blitz crank. Oh, use your W to block that. Nice. Huge. Blitzcrank has no hook. You don't have to worry. It's up. Oh, it's back up now. It's okay. Save your exhaust. Exhaust this guy now. Exhaust him right away. Okay, you didn't exhaust him and it ended up being okay, but I would exhaust him right away. Because if you exhaust him right away, Ash will turn around and auto attack and you potentially kill him unless he flashes and heals out. But he's burning a sum to get out either way if you exhaust him there. You know Nunu doesn't have W because he just used it. You know he doesn't have hook. So I think you just exhaust and turn on ADC there. But you held your stumps, you still have it, so it's fine. Exhaust ADC instantly. Alright, nice. Um, let's rewatch. I think you played this a bit badly. So in this situation, you kind of have to be like, you took exhaust and you have guardian. It's better for Blitzcrank to hook you. Like, look at your HP and your ADC's HP. It's better for you to get hooked than your ADC. Because look at their Tristana's HP. If Tristana, um, if Tristana's full HP, it gets a bit more scary. But with the HP threshold, if Tristana goes all in on you with a W and even trades kills onto you, she's still dying and your ADC is still, still alive to push. But if your ADC gets jumped on and killed, then you're left to push and your ADC is missing out on all the EXP and stuff. So I think here you're playing too safe. I think you have to play aggressive here and just eat the hook. Like here, when Blitzcrank's running here, you know your ADC's getting hooked no matter what. So like, you should have just walked here and blocked the Blitzcrank hook for your ADC. And if Tristana W's in on you and you exhaust her, odds are you live because of Ash heal too. But if you don't live, at least you're still training kill for kill and your ADC's alive to shove the wave in and get all that EXP and CS. Compared to this, where you let him go in on your ADC, you exhaust your, the Tristana too late. You should have exhausted her earlier. Maybe your ADC would have lived if you exhausted her a second earlier. Um, but yeah, see how you trade and now you're stuck to shove the wave in and your ADC is losing all this EXP and stuff. Oh, and you're getting killed here. It was really bad. Yeah, not a good flash. I respect it though. Oh, do you get out? Set's here. Wait, Set's trolling you. Set's actually trolling you right now. Blitzcrank has no hookup and Yunu has no W up. And he doesn't like finish that off. Anyways, let's see what you got here. Uh, against Blitzcrank, I really prioritize health. You got enough. You got the revolver. Um, I think this might be a mistake into this lane. I think, like I said, you need to be eating hooks for your ADC. Where did the tower shot go? Zero damage? No idea. Tower not working for us. I think you might want to consider into this lane because it's a kill lane. I'm going boots and a kindle gem. Because you could have gotten boots and kindle gem, I think, with the amount of gold you had. Which is just more defensive. It's like that last game versus Nautilus where I rushed Kindle Gem versus that. Right? 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, yeah, so you would have had enough for Boots, Kindle Gem, a refillable potion, and maybe even a control ward. Right? So you could have got Boots, Kindle Gem, refillable, and maybe a control ward on top. Compared to getting an item, like you're 
not able to play aggressive in this lane. It's about counter engaging and not getting one shot. You want to be able to bait a hook and ulti. Like you want to at level six, walk in front of bits, let him hook you and push ulti and not die before your ulti goes off. So I think you maybe should have just gone more defensive into this lane, but we'll see if it, you get punished for it or not. You could also find a pick with this, but the problem is with Trist is she can always W out of your EQ combo. So like even if you hit the E, she can W out. So the odds are you're never gonna one shot Trist anyways. Like she can even W out of an Ash alt. It's really hard for you to go aggressive into this lane. If their ADC was something maybe like a Kai'Sa, I could maybe sympathize with it, but I don't know. I think versus Tristana Blitz, you should just go defensive and be safe. You start getting refillables, refillables are like really good. So I like that you're walking towards mid. Um, again, you can't really stay too long because you said before with the Blitz, but your ADC is in a safe place. Your mid's gone, so this is fine. Go back, Bolt. Clear this ward. Nice, nice. Okay, well, Tristana has no W for 20 seconds. You should be coming into lane and trying to go for a really aggressive play if you can. Because Tristana's W is still down for another 12. You took the long route, but if you went straight to lane, you'd have a small window to, to try and abuse a trade. Like, especially since you took this item, that 20 second window, you have to try and punish it if you can. But now it's too late because it's back up. Because you took a worse path. Hello, Tim Tim. We're just doing a VOD review and then ending stream. So your positioning is good. You have to be a bit more scared now that they're hitting level 6. You can actually get one shot, so you have to be a bit more scared. Again, this lane's kind of boring. You're playing it pretty well, to be honest. You just have to play safe. Oh, never th ever throw root in this lane, ever. You have to save it, or else Tristana... Like, if Tristana wanted there, let's replay and watch what Tristana could have just done, right? Actually, your ADC is level 6, so she couldn't. Never mind. But, like, technically here, right? Tristana... Ash has alt, but I think you might have still just lost it anyways because they're both 6 and you're not. Like, Tristana right here can just straight up W onto your ADC. And then the slow will get Blitz in range to silence, walk up, and EQ. And your ADC probably just dies here if Tristana just Ws in now that your root's down. You have to save this. You only want to use Q versus this lane. If you throw root and miss, you're screwed. If you're level 6, maybe that's you have something, but you're not 6 yet. If you were 6, I think that would have been okay, but you're not. You have to be playing defensive when you're not 6 and they're both 6. So, you know this is warded, so just let your jungler know that's warded. Uh, their jungler's doing dragon. Your jungler's topside. They're trading objectives. There's no reason for you to walk there at all. Maybe look for a play on your Tristana real quick here. Well, Blitzcrank is gone. No? Uh, you should ping her ADC B because you don't want her to be pushing. Push her, ping her B to try and get her to freeze the wave here. If she doesn't, she doesn't. But if you ping her B, there's a chance she'll stop bottling and freeze the wave. Okay, Blitz hook is down. We know Nunu's bot though, so we need to be careful. Um, but this is an opportunity where you can look for a play. See what I was saying before though, how useless this item is? Like you're not really getting damage off or going for all-ins. You're more just playing defensively. You need to eat the hook. You need to eat the hook. Yeah, you need to eat the hook. It's the same thing I said before. If it feels bad, but if your ADC has flash, you don't have to eat the hook and you have to assume she'll flash it. But here, your ADC has no flash. I know you tried to W block it, but you should have sent your W for it and then stood in front of her. Because if you stand in front, this is the perfect moment where you bait it with your ulti. Say right here, right before the hook hits you, you push R, right? Let's like watch this in like slow-mo, right? So say this is you, and your ulti's going off right now, right? This Tristana is probably going to W out or walk out. You're getting a free ulti on this guy. Your Ash can, is here and can probably ulti the Tristana with her ult instead of getting one shot. She can use her Ash arrow on the... Like, if Trist doesn't W, it can't W in because of your ulti, right? So, e aka, she's in a perfect spot where your ADC can W her. And then out of this, you can EQ auto-attack her. And then maybe you can trade a kill. But either way, not blowing, blocking for your ADC. Like, either way... Worst case scenario, you block, you die, and your ADC lives. That's the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, you not blocking, your ADC dies, and you don't get a kill. Like, this is way worse than you dying. That's why I hate it when people talk about KDA, because you just have to be blocking those for your ADC. You probably also should have ultied. Like, you didn't ulti that whole time. When, like, as soon as your ADC got hooked, you probably still should have ultied right away. Just to zone. Hello, Aegis. We're just doing a VOD review here, right? So you should be ulting right now. Just alt, alt, right? You're not ulting. If you start your ulting here, 
again, Tristana has to, like, walk away. Or she has to, like, he gives your ADC time to maybe do something. Although, your Tristana, get your ADC getting caught is your not your fault, because she was positioning bad, but you should have blocked for it and just ulted. I just found your stream earlier today. Your content is entertaining AF. Keep up the good work. Hey, thank you, Olamine. I appreciate it. So what do you get here? You got boots. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Boots is always good versus blitz. Wait, did you just buy two regular potions? Okay, you didn't. You already had two pots. Okay, this is okay. I actually usually just sell my one pot and get a refillable. I don't know which is better, but I just really value refillables. The way I see it is a refillable costs 150, but you sell it for 60, right? So like you pretend this, if it costs 150, but you sell it for 60, that means technically the item only costs 90. Now that doesn't count for other items that you're not selling, but for an item that you're 100% down the line selling, you can consider the item only costing 90 gold because you're selling it for 60 later. So for 90 gold, you're getting two potions, or you can spend 100 gold and get two potions. Which sounds better, right? 90 gold for two potions that refill, or 100 gold for two potions that don't refill. It's always better to get refillable over regular pots because it only costs 90 gold because you're selling it later, and you're getting potions that you get every time. Well, your ADC lives. Oh. Oh, it feels bad. You played that right. She just flashed it. Unlucky. Uh, she has a W back up, so don't get baited into, like, trying to go too hard. Oh, wait. She may not have enough mana for W. She doesn't. Do you kill her here? Pog. Oh! <laughs> oh, do you get a kill on Blitz, too? Ulti, ulti, ulti. Jeez, Kiloi. You pogging out. My boy. 90 gold for two potions that you'll use for the equivalent of like 10 more times. Maybe not that many, but yeah. At least 6 or 8. 6 or 8, just less than 10. I just need to be argumentative. Mm, again, I would go for the... T yeah, good. Go for the defensive play into this lane. You need to be eating hooks though. See, the reason why I say you should be building the HP is for the exact reason you're too scared to eat hooks for your ADC because you built damage. But you should be building the tank and then eating hooks for your ADC. Alrighty, um, dragon spawns in two minutes, so there's no objective right now. Um, at about, you want to get vision around it in about, like, 30 more seconds. Actually, they last, yeah, in about 30 seconds. I'm a Nico made mid, sometimes I use E and Mystic, get caught in a bad position, either dying or losing sums. Or losing sums, I'm gonna keep what you said in mind about holding E specific against counter picks. I wonder if does the enemy notice the R when you use your passive? No, your passive, actually, if you read here... Um, the third paragraph down, not the first or second, the last one. This ability is prepared in secret when Nico is disguised. So you always, 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 if the biggest thing I can ever teach any Nico mains trying to learn, my biggest tip is use your passive before you ulti. If you watch any of my replays, I never go for ulties when my passive's on cooldown. Whenever my passive gets popped, I guarantee you I'm not ultying again until my passive's off. In the middle of a team fight, it doesn't matter if I'm in the middle of a team fight. The sec, right before I ulti, I always use my passive because it's the... Like, whenever I look on the Nico mains, there's so many Nico mains, like, Nico's ult so bad, it's impossible to hit. The enemy can only get hit if they're terrible. It's because they're, I guarantee you, the people typing that don't use Nico's passive to cover it. It's the easiest ult to hit if you cover it. And, um, yeah, holding your E for counters is really important. It's the same thing, like, for Fizz mid. Fizz is, like, a hard lane for Nico. You have to wait to use your E until the Fizz uses his, like, jumpy move. If you don't use it before he uses his jumpy move, he'll just dodge it with the jumpy move and you're screwed. So, like, for sure, holding your E is really important into certain matchups. Some matchups you don't have to, but some matchups you do, right? Like, in mid again, if your verse is, like, I don't know, a Z and his W's up, you try to throw it and he'll just W and dodge it and go in on you, right? So, anyways, let's rewatch what just happened here. So, you see Blitz here, right? You're going to get hooked here, but it should be pretty... So, you're just being greedy. Really greedy. You had your W up, and you just face check it instead of sending your W in. 
But honestly, I don't think they can kill you here, to be honest. Like, if Tristana goes in on you, you can just exhaust her and kill her, so I think you're okay. Set's so going for Hex Flash. Oh, watch out. Mimi's behind. Oh, good boy. You should have exhausted Tristana, too. You would have lived. You're just being way too aggressive here. Forget about the Nunu coming, right? You see the Nunu, and you should be instantly turning over here and helping, right? But you're like, literally, look at your positioning. You're like trying to get hooked. Like, look at you. This guy can just literally like hook you in 0.4 seconds, and you're just dead. Hello, MS Loki. You should be moving over here and protecting your Ash. Maybe walking over, rooting and ulting this guy. But yeah, right here, you needed to exhaust this guy. If I were you out of this knockup, I'd be spamming exhaust on Tristana and then um, walk away, right? If you exhaust Flash, you actually probably live because the exhaust stops you from dying. And hello, Loki. We're just doing a VOD review and then ending stream. Your tunnel vision? Bad gulag. Damn. Unfortunate back, too. Enough gold for anything. Red team's turret has been destroyed. These are good wards for the really good wards for before the dragon spawns uh, in 28 seconds. So I'll explain for people in chat who may not know. You're playing very bad, Gulag. No, you played really, really good for most of the game. The only thing so far I'd say that the big mistakes you make are not eating hooks for your ADC. And right there, playing over aggressive. Other than that, you haven't really made many mistakes yet so far. Um, also, throwing out E's too aggressively a lot. But either way, the reason why these are good wards, guys, is because if you put one ward right here, the enemy will walk in and sweep it, and then the ward's gone, right? And you have nothing. But if you put a ward here and here, they'll walk in and sweep this. They'll check this bush and find no ward, and they'll walk down here, and this bush will stay. So it's really good to place this ward here. This is a really good ward when you're doing dragon. So you should be spam pinging your team right now, the objective timer, and like being like, guys, come here. But good objective control, getting vision down before dragon spawns. Good use of your passive too to scare him. So yeah, your big thing is Nunu um, can steal this. He has Hex Flash. So you guys need to like force a fight or something first. Okay, this is a bit too aggressive. Oh, you're being really, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, Nunu can't hex flash the wall if he's in combat, so I guess it worked out. You were being five head. You were making sure he couldn't get in because he can't hex flash in combat. I mean, obviously, I don't need to tell you you shouldn't be walking in like that, right? Um, the only thing I'll say is you should just ulti as soon as you got hooked. Your W's up, though. You have a bad habit. That's twice this game. You've walked in and face checked bushes instead of using your W, right? You should have just W'd right now. If you W'd right now and then follow behind your W, Blitz's hook would have got eaten by it, and then you could have hit a double root with ulti on the Nunu and Blitzcrank. But you don't use your, your passive, your W to block for you. Which is also a tip to people in lane against Blitzcrank or Nautilus. You can send your W in front of you and run out and look for a hook and an E and then walk away and your, your, your W blocks for you, basically. It's like a bodyguard. I don't think you have enough for your item again, too, which is unfortunate. Oh, you sold stuff to get it? Pog, you have enough. Walking straight time. I like this idea. You still have your ulti up. Oh, man, that's so unlucky. I think you win this. You just have to exhaust. Oh. Nice try. Good job. Exhaust him. Let's just exhaust him. Ooh, log. Don't be afraid to use your exhaust. You don't ever exhaust. You've only used your exhaust once this game. Don't be afraid to use it more aggressively. I would have used it on the Yasuo when your Echo was coming in. It would have made it harder for him to be sliding around everywhere. Now exhaust someone. Exhaust your Stana. If you exhaust your Stana there, your set actually lives probably because he would have lived by like one auto. Yo, that was ballsy. 
Gulag, what are you doing? You're not doing too bad still. But trying to ulti Yasuo when he had all the minions next to him was an obvious mistake. You have to make sure he's... You have to make sure you're either standing in the wave so that no matter where he is to, you're on top of him. Or you have to exhaust him and like land a root and something. I probably wouldn't go spell pen boots this game. I'd probably get something tankier since you're going to be getting hooked in. Like armor boots is really good with Tristana and Yasuo. So you know they're all topside here. So the fact that you know they're all here means right now you have free time to walk down and maybe get a vision in this push and like get a vision ward here and just get vision on your flank, right? Because you have wards here and you can get vision here because you know that they're all up here. Also just placing a ward in the middle of lane like right here, because you don't have your tower here, Getting a ward right here is really useful, right? Because right now, you only see this guy, but like their team, right? You would know that Yasuo is here too, right? And if anyone comes down and they go between the jungles, getting a ward in the middle here when you have your tower gone is really valuable. And you have three wards up, so... Because like, watch, right here when these minions all die, right? You have no idea where they are. If you had a ward right here, you'd know, oh, these guys could potentially be walking here trying to flank, right? They could potentially be walking here to steal a camp or flank here. If you have a ward right here, right now, when you lose vision, you know exactly where they're going, right? So because you didn't place a ward here, you now have no idea where those two just went. And now you can't safely go and, like, if you had a ward here, you could actually, like, walk and face check this bush and maybe get a ward here because you could see the mid. But it's, since you can't see the mid, now it's like you have to use your W to face check this bush. And now that you use your W to face check this bush, you can't get a ward in this bush because your W's not up. So you have to just get like a passive ward right there or something. See the ward there? Yeah, so it did go over there. So oh no, he's right there. So even I didn't know where he went. You almost have your flash up. You can maybe look for a big play. Okay, now you're too low. You're just suffering from visions now though. Can you save that, then pick? I feel like you're trying to trick me something. You need to force a play when your team... So your team's all coming back. They're all up, and you have Flash, Ulti, and Proto Belt. You should look for a play if you can. You have to take the game into your hand right here. So you gotta get your passive up. Your problem is you're playing two in the middle. If I were you... You don't want your passive to get broken. If I were you, I would be either... When they're walking down the middle, you either want to be standing like right over here or on the same thing over here so that when they funnel in, you can come from behind. But if you're standing here, you get poked out by Zig, something breaks your passive. You wanna go somewhere where you're less likely to get your passive broke. If you're standing on your team and minions, it's really easy because Zig's and them are all throwing spells in this direction anyways, right? This applies for if you're playing mid lane Nico too, right? So you look exactly what happened. Zig's is throwing minion things in your minions and it gets hits you, right? But even though your passive's gone, I still think you should be positioned on the side over here. You're kind of being positioned on the side, but see how you're cutting into under your tower? You really, like, it's hard to hit anything. If you were standing right here, right, and you come in from behind onto their back line is, like, the proper way to play. It's not a decent ult, but I think if you got in the, through the back line, you could have done, like, a big play. Again, you didn't use your exhaust. You're not using your exhaust at all this game. I think you only used it once. So you got movie, these boots, that's fine too. Helps you dodge skill shots. Um, I wouldn't recommend building full AP this game. You're too far behind. It's going to take you way too long. You want an instant power spike. So you probably just want like, I don't know, some sort of a tanky item. Shirelia's is probably okay too. Zhonya's is going to be take too long though, I think. Actually, I would still probably build Zhonya's because versus Blitz, it's super good. Ziggs is making it impossible for you to use your passive though. It's, yeah, it's, you probably have to just give this up. Yeah, 
Ooh. Yeah, she had to. I almost feel like he maybe could have turned that. But nah. Probably getting out of his right. Okay, well, next you have to get vision around your, uh... Get vision around your, your, your dra- your Baron. It sucks that you lost Flash, though, now. You lost a lot of playmaking potential. That's why people sometimes say, like, you died with Flash up. Sometimes I feel like it's better. Like, say if you died here with Flash up, it almost is better in some ways. It's hard to know, tell in hindsight, but it's like, you could have died there, gave 300 gold, but then had a Flash ulti play and maybe take Baron, right? It's a lot harder for you to make plays without Flash. I really value on Nico holding Flash for aggressive plays than defensive, if you can. I don't know why you're walking all the way around here, TBH. So you have your W up, right? You walk up and sweep these. Ash just arrowed, uh, did all that. I would just send my W towards this bush, right? Chill, send your W and just chill here for like 20 seconds. Or not 20 seconds, 5 seconds. Send your W in that bush. And when your W checks there's no one in that bush, you can walk up and put a ward of the wall. You have Echo here, right? So you know no one can come and flank you here. Ash arrow just went here. So the only there's no one can be here, right? So just send your W, wait, and then get a ward over the wall. Come over, get a ward over the wall here. Put a ward on Baron, and then reset. Once you ward here, here, and here, you want to reset to get more wards. Because they're going to walk in and sweep it all, and then you'll have no wards on you. But you're walking this way, which is kind of just like... That's a good ward, though, that I taught you. Um, you put it too far, though. If you're going to put this ward, the trick is it's this this plant. You basically want to put it right in the corner behind the plant right there. If you put it right there, it'll give you vision up to the wall right here. So that if their team comes in, they see you. And the reason for people who don't know why this is a good ward, usually the team will come in and they'll sweep like this. And they'll sweep here and walk to the back of the pit. But they won't walk over here, right? So if you put a ward right there, it'll show the front of the pit. So you can see them when they walk in and they won't sweep it. But you didn't put in a good spot here. They can walk in and still sneak in. You didn't know the exact spot? Yeah, it's right where this plant is. You just want to smush it right behind the plant there. And it'll give you vision up to here. And it's a really good ward if you don't want it to get swept. Like, yeah, your wards you got down right now are pretty bad. They don't really... Like, this ward doesn't like do anything because you have a control ward on it and even without the control ward this ward is doing the same thing as that ward you have no vision here so their team can just like sneak in like you really needed to get vision in this area you also like i said after you place your wards you need to reset right you have no wards to replace, and they're going to sweep all your wards. So you needed to, like, instantly back. You have to... F oh, man. Unlucky. Do you have a warding guide? No, but you can look up warding guides. I think you just needed to commit here. I honestly think the second these guys showed, you needed to ulti. And just proto belt in and exhaust the Yasuo. Because you guys are probably going to lose the game here if they get Baron. And they get Baron off this. Like, if the game was more even, I'd say give up Baron. But the fact that you guys are just, like, missing an inhib mid. If they get the Baron, they'll probably take a second inhib. And then you'll probably just lose the game. Your whole team is in the vicinity. This guy's here. This guy's coming in a flank. Ash isn't there yet, but she can Ash arrow. And it's okay if she comes in late. I almost feel like it's a losing fight, but I almost feel like here you have to just ulti and commit into this with an ulti protobelt and exhaust the Yasuo. Right? Because you could have ultied here and just like completely like... This game's probably just over, right? Like you guys could have maybe won that fight still. Echo could have got like a big W in there with a big stun and stuff. You guys probably just lose now. But honestly, I feel like a lot of that was because of your warding. Because if you look back... Your warding was okay. The problem is, is you want to get, again, a ward here, right? If you had a ward here and a ward, right? If you went, like, ward here, ward here, and, like, a ward here, you'd have this line of vision going like this with this control ward, and it'd be a lot easier to know they're there. But your teammate probably just suicided anyways. When you're behind, you're likely not trying for plays. Yeah, but I feel like there was actually maybe a winnable fight. And it looks like based on the thing that you guys are just about to lose this game here.
We should force a fight there. I think again you should have just forced the fight. You had your root up. Right? Look here. I feel like... Actually, this is a Yasuo with Wind Wall, though. Maybe you couldn't. Yeah, maybe you couldn't because he has Wind Wall. Yeah, the Wind Wall stopped it. Never mind. Oh, Echo, you fool. See, all this is coming back to use your alt flashes to go for defensive plays. Oh, a huge alt. No follow, though. I think the reason why that failed is you got a good ulti, but the t you have to wait till the minions hit the tower, right? You have to wait till the minions are here because your team can't really leave the tower. And you're going in when your minions aren't near. I get you're making a play now, but now your team's nowhere, like, right? Your team's all back here. You have to chill here, like I said before, you chill right here and wait, and when the minions are at the tower and their team's right here, you come from behind like this. And then your team can engage because the tower is right there. That's probably GG. Well, I hope this helped Mr. Gulag. I don't think he played bad this game at all though, Gulag. I think the biggest thing was not eating hooks for ADC in lane and not looking for like big ulties with your flash mid game. You have to make plays with your ulti or you're just going to lose. Like at this level especially, when you're watching me on my Grandmaster account, I play a bit more safe, but that's because my teammates are better. In this elo, you have to make plays or you're just going to lose.